Grace, Casey, Paul PD, Don, this one, Paul, 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Vaiti Vidar Har Shri Vasa Di Gopakta Vindhika. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopopina Shayana Kun Radha Kun Giri Govindam Ki. Brinda Avandam Ki. Navadip Dham Ki. Mayapur Dham Ki. Jagannath Puri Nilam Chala Dham Ki. Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Mahalaya. Shri Shri Gauri Thai. Shri Shri Radha Swarat Vihari Ki. Bhakti Devi Tulsi Devi Ki. Jamuna Mai Dhanda Mai Ki. Samavir Bhakti Vindhi Ki. Hari Nam Sank Your Time Ki. Sank Your Time Ki. Transcendent Book Distribution Ki. Go Premanandi. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Shri Guru Shigaranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Sunday love feast, and I believe we have one new guest in the gym. Jean, welcome, Jean. Thank you for coming. So this week is a very uh, festive week. I believe on Thursday, Diwali. I find it very interesting. For at least several years, a former President Obama, he would give the uh, Diwali address, and sometimes. In our Indian community, they say Diwali is like New Year's. Yeah. Was it Solomon Bari? Mm -hmm. Solomon Bari. But Obama said, he explained, it is actually a festival of good over evil. And he described the pastime of Lord Ramchandra coming back to Ayodhya. And I thought, my God, am I hearing what I'm hearing? He's describing even what we don't say sometimes. It's about Lord Ramchandra coming back to the candles lit to show him his way back. Very special time. In the beginning, Iskand did not celebrate Diwali. And then Gopal Krishna Raj was telling Srila Prabhupada that Prabhupada is very nice that in India people like these Diwali cards. <laughs> and many, many people take these cards. So Prabhupada encouraged him after that, okay, we can do Diwali. But on the right understanding, it's the glorification of Lord Ramchandra. Please remember that. And then the next day is? And sometimes known as Anakut. Nice dreams. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a very special festival. Especially within our movement, we very um, gorgeously celebrate this Govardhan Puja. I remember years and years ago, we would make the hill completely a hollow. Yeah. And then there's one devotee in my home temple, he came up with an innovation. He would put the metal bowl in the middle and then put the hollow. <laughs> So the whole hill wouldn't be hollow, but I like it when the whole hill is like a rice or hollow, a little clink clink in the meadow. And then, happy to, the last time I came, I was here for one book, and the hill was amazing that you made here. So make it even bigger. <laughs> and then the bodies go around the hill, and then we always tell them, if you don't serve your man lake over that hill, it says in the Krishna book, there are many snakes on over that hill, and they will bite you. We don't circumambulate. It's a very special festival. Not just because of the snake bites, but... <laughs> so what we're talking about this evening, I was requested to speak about Govardhan Puja since it's coming on Friday. But I had also been thinking about speaking on the third purpose of ISKCON. And as I meditated on it, I realized it's a perfect fit. The third purpose of ISKCON and the underlying meaning of Govardhan Puja, which we'll talk about. And I really need all of your participation from the reading. 
Hello, honey boy. No problem. It might be very important stuff. So. You know, sometimes when something happens, we get upset, right? Like if you're driving in the car and the person in front of you is speeding or something, they may be rushing to the hospital to save someone's life. And we get all angry. And so the phone may be ringing from India. So she's saying, you know, your auntie wants to talk to you or whatever. So let us be careful how upset we get and how quickly we become upset because we never know what the other person is going through, correct? This means yes. <laughs> it also means I watch you, you get prashadam. All the head shakers, when I say that, <laughs> you're making a note, you'll get prashadam the rest of you. <laughs> so this, this time, when you think about Govardhan Puja, at least when I was meditating upon it for the last few days, is that those residents of Vrindavan, okay, they all came together on the one premise, and that was their lives were in danger. And we'll talk a little bit about the story of Govardhan, because I don't want to spoil the festival, so I know they'll have a nice discussion. Maybe, is there a drama this year? Is there no drama? I like when they do a drama and they make a Govardhan hill and they, somebody goes under the hill and pulls it up. <laughs> and they say, Sambartaka. What is Sambartaka? Sambartaka are the clouds that Indra call to bring the rain and the hail and all these things on the residents of Vrindavan. Those are the clouds that come at the end of creation. You have to imagine what they were subjected to. The Sambhartika cloud comes at the end of creation to inundate everything and destroy everything. So Indra, Sambhartika! My God, why are you bringing the Sambhartika? It's an overkill. He was so angry at the residents of Vrindavan that he brought the most devastating clouds you can imagine. Just like we just recently had the hurricanes in Puerto Rico and in Texas and in Florida and in back in the area and in New Orleans and just horrible. That's nothing compared to Sambhartha, what the residents of Vrindavan were subjected to. So they did the right thing. They actually took shelter of Krishna. So there's a verse in Bhagavad Gita that helps us, or at least gives us some platform to think about this. It's verse chapter 1, text 19. So I was looking for a verse that could help us here. Yeah. So go show Dr. Astra Nam Vidyani Vyadarayat Navascha Prithivin Chaiva Tumulo Vyanadayam. The blowing of these different conch shells became uproarious, vibrating both in the sky and on the earth. It shattered the hearts of the sons of Dhritarashtra. Purport. When Bhishma and the others on the side of the Yodana blew their respective conch shells, there was no heart breaking on the part of the Pandavas. Such occurrences are not mentioned, but in this particular verse it is mentioned that the hearts of the sons of Vitarastra were shattered by the sounds vibrated by the Pandavas party. So these last two sentences get to look here very carefully. This is due to the Pandavas and their confidence in Krishna, Lord Krishna. So keep that word in your mind, confidence in Lord Krishna. Last sentence. One who takes shelter of the Supreme Lord has nothing to fear. Even in the midst of the greatest calamity. And as I mentioned, um, during the Govardhan Leela, this wonderful festival, during the time that Krishna actually did it, the devotees were subjected to most trying situation with the Sambhartika clouds coming. So what they did is very interesting. And that's what we want to talk about this evening, what they actually did. And I'll put this for all of you to think about. It's not like me just telling you. We need to understand this. Those devotees came together and they all surrendered to Krishna. So in the third purpose of this time, which we're going to weave that into this discussion, Third purpose of this kind. Who remembers what it is? You all should be learning it, <laughs> memorizing it. It's as important as anything else in this movement because this was Prabhupada's vision of the movement. We want to be part of this movement. Yes? Yes. 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 We want to be in the movement as Prabhupada envisioned the movement going forward. That will assure the success of this movement if we just follow what Prabhupada said. Not only 16 rounds, four regular principles, only eight prasadam, so many things. He had a 
vision, seven purposes, which he wrote in India before he came to America, when he was in Jhansi. He did the League of Devotees, so he had this perspective. So he continued that when he filed for the ISKCON in New York in 1966. These seven purposes are there. And if you look throughout all of ISKCON, you'll find that most of the bylaws of most of the ISKCON temples, the seven purposes are there to guide us. So the third purpose says to bring the members of the society together with each other and nearer to Krishna, the prime entity, thus developing the idea within the members and humanity at large that each soul is part and parcel of the quality of God here. So one part of the discussion will be how to become closer to each other and nearer to Krishna. So that's why I think this Govardhan festival, this Govardhan puja is so closely aligned to this verse. Those devotees came closer together, right, and nearer to Krishna. Because Krishna was there holding up the hill with which hand? I can't remember. Which finger? That one? That one. In most cases, that's the weakest one. Like I'm a drummer and I practice drums a lot and they say, make your weak hand strong. And they always say you're left hand. Unless you're left handed. But normally it's this left hand is the weakest. And that finger right there, it's almost like, I don't want to say useless, but it's like, you don't go to that one. You go to that one or, you know. Krishna went with that one. He wanted to show, on my smallest, weakest finger, I can protect you. And they were all thinking, we're not sure. He's just little Krishna. How old is Krishna during that time? Who knows? Seven years old. A seven-year-old boy. Like in Atlanta, we have what's called Stone Mountain. Has anyone ever been to Atlanta? Even? <laughs> I actually only live about two miles from there. I can see Stone Mountain from my house. You know? Stone Mountain in Georgia is like a huge attraction. It's the largest piece of exposed granite in the world. There's also some other sordid histories. I won't talk about some of the other stuff we really do, but that hill still is not even as wide as Govardhan. It's wide, but not as wide as Govardhan. So you can imagine something like Mount Rushmore. A seven-year-old kid walks up to Mount Rushmore with his little left finger and tries to pick it up. You say, that's cute. <laughs> that's so cute, but it never happened. So the residents of Vrindavan had, they had some reasons to believe that Krishna was powerful. They thought, maybe he's a demigod. They never thought he was God. They said, he's, maybe he's a little powerful because he killed Putana. He's playing on her lap. He also killed Trinavarta. So many things he had done. But they still didn't think he was God. So when he picked up that hill, you have to see their mindset. They were not confident that he could do it. And as a description of that in the Nectar Devotion, <clears throat> if you see the painting, the, uh, the original painting from Iskand paintings, you see Krishna has the hill in the middle, standing there. And some of the gopas, the men have their sticks trying to help him hold the hill. Now come on. <laughs> but they didn't believe he could do it. He's got the hill, they have the sticks. And what happened was, I don't know if I should tell the whole part of what happened. The hill started to shake. And they really became afraid. Really, you can imagine holding those sticks up trying to my God, we knew he couldn't do it, now look! <laughs> but Krishna was looking at the gopis. And when he was looking at the gopis, he's like, whoa. <laughs> he got all excited. And the hill started, but he still he was holding on to it. But what happened, the devotees, after seven days, and it says in the Krishna book, all their needs were met. And I think about that, wait a minute, seven days? How many provisions? It's like in Puerto Rico, they're trying to get all these provisions to the people for the last I don't know, three weeks or whatever. You know, it's not that easy. So they had provisions for seven days, sleeping, eating, everything they had to do under that hill. He held it up like an umbrella. And then gradually, you can imagine, you have to, to follow with me on this and follow Sri Rapala on this. They, they began to believe Krishna's protecting us. So I just read from the Bhagavad Gita, one who fully depends on Krishna. And also the verse 1866. This is a little test. Who knows Bhagavad Gita 1866? Keep going. Go ahead. 
Just surrender unto me. Give up all varieties of religion. Just surrender unto me. Now that's not easy. When I joined the movement, I was coming from a Southern Baptist background. And all the way to initiation in Chicago, we drove from Atlanta. All the way there, I'm thinking about my Christian background. And I had this meditation. I said, I'm going to see a man called Prabhupada. I had not really seen him yet, personally. I'm going to see a man who comes from the same God that my mother told me about. That was my meditation. That was my only point of reference. Because I had not been in the movement long enough to believe in all the Vedic philosophy and Krishna and all. I, mean, I was trying my best. But that was my point of reference. I'm going to see a man who comes from the same God that my mother told me about. So after seeing Prabhupada, and after all these years of hearing Prabhupada, it's not that I have lost my belief or faith in Christian values, Lord Jesus, all those things. I have more faith in Jesus, because I've heard Prabhupada talk about him so many times in a wonderful way. Have you read the book, Science of Separatization? There are three chapters about Jesus that Prabhupada wrote, or he spoke about. And in one time he says, someone asked me, who is Jesus Christ? I said, he is our guru. Prophet said, he is our guru. Anyone who's preaching the glories of the Lord. So it took a little bit for me to get the faith in what Prabhupada is saying and Krishna and what Krishna can do for us. Now I have to say, and I'll take a leap of faith on this, most of us don't have complete faith in Krishna. Would some of you agree with me on that? I don't have complete faith. Now, I've been here for 40 something years. I still, I'm trying to get it. <laughs> It's like I just heard Prabhupada give a lecture and he was talking about Bhishma. You know, Bhishma was lying on the bed of arrows. I'm sure most of you, especially for many of you, know that story. Bhishma was lying on the bed of arrows from Mahabharata. Because Bhagavad Gita is from Mahabharata. So Prabhupada explained that Bhishma was lying on the bed of arrows, hoping, waiting to see Krishna. That's why he didn't die. He had the benediction, you can die whenever you want to die. His father gave that benediction because of, you know, from Mahabharata, that whole story. So he didn't have to die. He was lying there waiting. And Prabhupada says, hoping to see Krishna. He didn't know who would see Krishna. And in this lecture, Prabhupada begins to well up in emotion. And he stopped the lecture. Thinking that Bhishma was just hoping to see Krishna. Are we all hoping to see Krishna? Lawa Lawa Samayi. This kind of burning hankering to see Krishna. That's what's needed. In order for us to cut through all this maya, we have to let go of some of this material attachment. And we have to hanker to see Krishna. And how do we get that hankering? What do we do to get that hankering? The Bhagavatam explains. Sushu Shoshana Dhanasya, Vasudeva Kataluji. That, that taste for hearing about Krishna comes from actually serving the devotees. Shan Mahat Sevaya Deeper. You serve the great devotees, you'll get that taste, that affinity for the message. Then the Bhagavatam also says, Srinvata Svakata Krishna, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Hridyanta Stoga Badrani, Vidu Noti When you have developed the urge to hear the message of Krishna, he's in your heart. Hridyanta Stoga Badrani, Hridya means heart. He cleanses the heart. You can't do it. We can't do it. I mean, think about it. How many things are we still attached to? Do you want me to tell you my stuff? You would be embarrassed. Oh, Bono Richard, you're still attached to that? Yes. <clears throat> Is he Carson, so I won't talk about cheesecake. <laughs> right, sweetie? I meant you right. I mean, there are so many little subtle things we're attached to. Like Prabhupada mentions in the neck of instruction, offering very palatable foods with the hope of enjoying in the name of offering to Krishna. We're all guilty. Right? Yes, come on, shake your head. Remember, that's, yes means Prashad, no means zero. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all guilty. We have all these little things over here, over there. And they're not bad. It's not that they're horrible, but they're still attachments. Krishna is expert at taking all of your attachments, especially if you're trying to be a devotee. Watch out for this. That's why Prabhupada explained it in India. Many people, work, they would rather worship Lord Shiva because he is very easy to please. Asutos, right? He's very easy to please, but also very easy to displease. So they go to Lord Shiva and they do some prayer and they get something. 
You come to Krishna, he may not give you. Why? Is, why does Krishna hold back sometimes? If you read the life of Srila Prabhupada, which you all should do, if you want to understand how to be a devotee, I mean, I'll try to help you the best that I can. <laughs> Study Srila Prabhupada. He explains that Krishna took everything from him. It's almost too painful to hear his story. Believe me, it's just like too painful. I was just reading the other day in his biography of Prabhupada. He was wearing ragged dhotis. This is dhoti. I probably have about 20 people giving me so many dhoti. I haven't bought a dhoti in 25 or 30 years. The boy's always given to me. Thank you so much. Prabhupada didn't even have a decent dhoti. And when he was trying to print his books, he would save the money that he could eat breakfast with. He would not eat breakfast. He would go see that gentleman with the printing shop. And that gentleman would say, Bhaktivedanta, have you eaten breakfast? And he knew that Prabhupada hadn't eaten. Have you eaten breakfast? Prabhupada says, no problem. He said, I'll arrange for you. And that became like a ritual. Every time Prabhupada came, he knew Prabhupada had not eaten breakfast. Mm -hmm. I will arrange for you. Painful. Painful. And Prabhupada said in a letter one time, sometimes at night I'm feeling starvation. Nothing to eat. So when he first was coming to America, I believe it was his son, his youngest son, Vrindavan, I think his name is Vrindavan. He's still alive. And now he speaks sometimes with devotees, Prabhupada's son. His other son, when Prabhupada called him and asked him to come and help him to go to the Gidon Jaladut, the other son was mad at Prabhupada. But Prabhupada had left his family. So that older son, I'm not coming. Nobody from the family, so Prabhupada called his younger son. And he said, yes, Papa, I'm coming. And that young son said, he was, the son was crying when Prabhupada got on the boat. So the, the son was thinking, at least my daddy has some cereal, and if he cannot find anything in America, he can take some water and soak the cereal and have some food. That's how difficult it was. Prabhupada was a businessman. He had businesses in India, the pharmaceutical business. And at one time, he actually did pretty good. And then his business got up and down, up and down. But after he started dreaming, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur told him, take sannyas. Takes in yards. But Prabhupada was still trying to make money to take care of his family. Trying his best. And Bhakti Siddhanta was driving him, takes in yards. And Prabhupada said, I was horrified. How can I take in yards? My family, so many things. So it's interesting, Prabhupada had a meeting with one of his god brothers, his sister, and his son, and I'll be one other person, uh, cousin or whatever. So they had a meeting to decide if Prabhupada should take sannyas. And Prabhupada's sister told Prabhupada, you don't worry about your family. I have five sons. I will take care of your family. Take sannyas. And finally he did. Because Krishna took everything from him. Every single thing. Money. Health. He was so sick at the age of 69. Everything he took from him. Why? Why Prabhupada? Because Prabhupada could endure that, so we would not have an excuse this day. Because we have so many excuses, right? Why we don't surrender? And then... Krishna took everything away, so that the Acharya for Iskan, we know, without anything, he started this movement. And now we're all sitting here, ready to enjoy Prasad. <laughs> Only because of Prabhupada. Only because Krishna didn't punish him. Because Krishna says, so someone I love, I take away everything. So you might think, I better not try to accelerate this love in Krishna because I'll go broke. <laughs> I'll take everything. But that's the greatest blessing. Then we come to Krishna like Draupadi, right? Hey, Govinda. Because she tried to save herself when they tried to pull the sari off. They were trying to pull the sari and Krishna was in the side hole putting more sari, putting more sari, putting more sari. So much so that, who was it pulling? Was it Dushashana? He was pulling, he got tired. So much sorry he was coming, he was getting tired. He's a big, healthy man. And she was trying to hang on like we all try to do. We try to protect ourselves. I'm not saying don't protect yourself. Don't get me wrong, okay? You know, if you want to do martial arts and MMA, that's not my problem. But Krishna is ready to protect. But do we have the faith? 
to depend on that. That's the real question. Krishna is ready. Krishna is qualified. More qualified. But we're not ready to surrender. We still try to protect ourselves in all these different areas. So when Draupadi let go, Krishna was there. So when the residents of Vrindavan, with all their little sticks and all their schemes, how they're going to protect themselves from Indra, oh, this little Krishna, he's nice, but I don't know if we can depend on that. Let's all try to help. And finally, when they realize, he's taking care of us. He's taking care of us. Sarva Dharma, Richaja, Mami Kam Sarva Dharma, Aham Sam Sarva Papayo, Mokshi Shami Masaja. Just surrender to me. I will protect you. Abhaya, Prabhupada's name was Abhaya Charananda, Charananda Bin. Abhaya means fearless. No fear. Don't be afraid. I'm saying this to you because I go through the same thing every single day. You know, estimating my power, my ability. I, no, one of the simplest ways that we try to protect ourselves is we try to avoid being criticized. Would you agree? We don't like to be criticized, yes or no? I mean, if you like being criticized, I mean, I don't know, most people don't like being criticized, right? But like they say, one of the, the number one fear in most people is public speaking. Because they're afraid they're going to make a mistake, say something wrong, someone's going to laugh at them, you know. So they don't do it out of fear. And then there's a quote that says, Do the thing you fear the most, and the death of fear is assured. So let's think about it. What do we fear the most? Well, there's some things we should fear. Number one, what is that? Maya. Huh? Maya. Maya. But let's, let's look at it in one direction. Prabhupada, I just read today, the fear of death. Because at any moment, God forbid, our lives could be finished. And I mentioned last time I was here, I'm trying to write this one song, it's called The Last Sunset, and I haven't completed, completed that song in 30 years. Because I'm afraid to write it. Because I know what it means. Today could be Bala Brothers last sunset. It's not a nice thought to think about. But, Prabhupada says you should have a healthy fear of death. And that should in inspire you to do what? What did the residents of Vrindavan do? I just said it earlier. They finally just surrendered to Krishna. So the fear of death should do what to us? can bring us together, bring us closer to Krishna? Well, the fear of death could. I mean, think about it. Would you like to have the bodies with you at that last moment? Like Prabhupada? Actually, Prabhupada requested all his disciples to come to Vrindavan. I didn't find this out until later. Then I became upset. <laughs> Why didn't you tell us that Prabhupada wanted us to come? I want all my disciples to come. So the leaders of the movement were afraid that if the devotees all went there, who's going to pay the bills? <laughs> who's going to sell the books? Prabhupada didn't care. You all come. Krishna will take you. There's so many little examples how we don't have complete faith. One time Prabhupada said in Chicago, he said, you should make enough prasadam to feed 25 people at all times. Nice hot prasadam. Halava, Puri, Sabji, Pokora. And the temple authorities are thinking, well, Prabhupada, how will afford that? He said, don't worry, Krishna is not a poor man. He can provide. Now, why are you thinking like that? Krishna can provide. Little fears that we have that hold us back. So, question again. What can we do to bring, each, bring ourselves closer to each other? I want some feedback on this. I'm not going to put you on the spot. I'm not going to point at Jagannath Priya and say, well, <laughs> or, you know, Kabuji here, you know, Jagannath Chandra. There's two, two Jagannaths. We've got so many Jagannaths here. So I'm going to point to this Jagannath. Yeah, but he won't talk to me right now. <laughs> so what can we do to bring the devotees closer together, as Prabhupada says in the third purpose? What are some of the things we can do? We can improve our own sadhana. Excellent point. Improve our own sadhana. Now, when you, when you say that, it's very interesting. If you're chanting nicely, that attracts others. They want to be a part of your life. They hear the beautiful chanting, sincere chanting, and open chanting. It's a very good point. What else? What can we do to bring us all closer together in the to Krishna? What, what do you say? What's your name? Venkat. Nice to meet you. So what would you say? Huh? Pray. 
A family that prays together. That's a Christian phrase. Stays together. I love that phrase. A family that prays together stays together. Now, does that apply to Iskon? Yes. How does it apply to Iskon? Our prayer is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Say it. Hare Ram, Ram, Hare Hare. Now, do you think Krishna heard that little wimpy Hare Ram? Give him a big one. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Christian the way Gobi said Hegelman. Because yeah. she had nothing else. What was she going to do? I mean, a room full of Chatriyas, Maharatis, can fight with thousands of men. And the shamefully, the Bandha was all, all sitting there not saying anything. Bishma's not saying anything. Drona's not saying No one's saying anything to defend this lady. And she's like trying to defend herself. Finally, Hegelman, please. And Gobinda came. So when you're chanting Hare Krishna, it's like a child crying for his mother. And mothers know that sound. <laughs> also, the husbands know that sound. Because I had my son when he was a child. That sound would drive me out of the house. But the mother had to take care of him. That's why it says, the <clears throat> closest thing that resembles love of God is the love between the mother and the child. Because it's selfless. God's love is selfless. Even if you're an atheist, if you're an atheist, you don't believe in God. But who's taking care of you? God. Oh, you don't believe in God? Fine. Somehow you're getting your food. You cannot manufacture, you know, food. You can manufacture nuts and bolts. Prabhupada talked about that a lot. But food grains? I'm not Bhavati Bhutan. I'm giving you this food grain. Prabhupada always tells that story, I believe, in World War II or World War I, the Germans or whatever. The people were praying to God in the church. They said, no, no, don't pray. Come and ask us for your bread, because nothing was coming. They were praying nothing. Was coming. So he said, okay, ask your God for bread. My dear Lord, give us our daily bread. No bread is coming. Now ask us for your bread. And they had a truck full of bread. And then they would give them bread, like their God. But where does the bread come from? Who can say? From the earth. Grains. But we're so spaced out as human beings. We think it comes from the government. So we give everything to the government. Or at least we're forced to give it to the government. Prabhupada didn't like the way this government is going. He didn't like it at all. He said, people may be upset with me, but I'm only just telling the truth. Like when I go to India, I haven't been there many years, but I used to get so upset with the government in India. I saw that the people were not getting the basic things. It really upset me. And there's so much money in India. Am I correct? So much money. Why do people have to suffer like this? Because the government people, Prophet said, they're keeping all this money for themselves and splitting it up. But Krishna is giving everything we need. He's showing every day why we should believe and trust in him. So the residents of Vrindavan, they finally gave full trust to Krishna. I say that because of fear of Indra, and it mentions in the Christian book, they had this fear, they all came together and surrendered on one point. So that's another aspect of what I want you to think about. In other words, what, what could cause all of us to come closer to each other? Someone said prayer. Someone said, the Buddha said, uh, personal sadhana. What is it that can bring us all together? Together, as Papa said and then nearer to Krishna. For the residents of Vrindavan, they were afraid of Indra. They had a real quantifiable fear. Storms, blocks of hail, it was horrible, some Arctic clouds. So they had a reason to come together. Sometimes we find ourselves a little bit separate from each other. So we don't come always together to serve Krishna. We have sometimes, I hate to use the word agenda because it has a bad connotation, but we do have our, kind of our own agendas, what we want out of this experience of Christian consciousness. There's a nice example of our former president, Ronald Reagan. And in the UFO community, they talk about this example. Ronald Reagan in front of the world, he said one time, he was talking about how the world is all separated. So he said like this, I, I wonder what would happen 
if a threat from outside of our planet came to us. And you think about what he's saying. We're fighting here on the earth. Russians, Americans, black, white, young, old, we're all fighting. So he said, what would happen if there was an external threat to all of us? It's like Govardhan Puja. That was an external threat that threatened each person equally. Each person was threatened in the same way. They could have died because of this storm. So he said, what would happen if a threat from outside of us, we're all fighting and arguing, what about a threat that's not part of us? I think we would all come together. That's what he said. So let's think about it for a second. Think about it for a second. What? It doesn't have to be necessarily a threat per se, but what could bring us all together on one point? Srila Prabhupada said before he passed away, the test of your love for me after I leave will be in how well you cooperate. Very simple point. Our cooperation shows how much we love Prabhupada. Conversely, the less we cooperate, this satisfies Prabhupada. Would you agree, yes or no? I told you, yes means sunny peace and no means that. But the point being, participate. Think about it. Okay, we want to please Srila Prabhupada, yes or no? Yes. yes. Otherwise, why are we here? Well, I said already, we have some other agendas. But the real agenda is to please Prabhupada. And I was telling someone today, right? Prabhupada said, when he came to Atlanta in 1975, the devotee asked Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, what pleases you the most? And that was a loaded question. Everyone knows it was a loaded question. Because it came from a book distributor. It was rotted out under a book distributor. They were so fired up during that time. They wanted Prabhupada to say, book distribution. To put a stamp of approval that book distributors were better than everybody in the temple. Because that's what the philosophy was going around. Book distributors got all the good prasadam. Book distributors got all the nice dhotis. Book distributors got all the nice rooms. Prabhupada, what pleases you the most? And Prabhupada looked around all these four or five hundred devotees, including Bhakti Bharaswami, Sadat Puda, Dhruta Karma, the list goes on and on and on. Sasu Maharaj. He said that you love Krishna. And the room was like pin silence. And the ladies went crazy. <laughs> but they said, we can love Krishna too. Everybody realized we can all love Krishna. Not just the book distributors, not just the fundraisers, not just the cooks in the kitchen, not just the men. Because at that time, there was a whole thing between men and women. And Prabhupada wanted to smash that. All of you can love Krishna. Right? What is that? Mamhi Partha Yapa Sri Kya Yevi Shu Papa Jonia Striyo Vaishya Tata Sudra Tepi Yanti Parangati Whether you're woman, Sudra, Vaishya, doesn't matter. Everyone can go back to God. It's a great equalizer. So, what is it that would bring us all together? If, any, if anyone has any, help me out because I'm, tr I'm trying to figure it out. Yes, Pachita Pavana. 24-hour kirtan. Wow. <laughs> Did you all hear that? 24-hour kirtan. I think Smith is working on that, Brett, for 24-hour kirtan. We had it. Uh, we had two couple of years in a row. What what date is that? Now, I'm even trying to figure out how I can come back for that. She invited me last night, so I have to come back. 24-hour kirtan. I always say this. I preface it by saying I don't like to give examples of my home temple, but this is a nice example. You need to hear it. Oh, Maybe one, you were there. You, you were, the one, the he's like my son. When I see him, I'm so happy. He's such a wonderful devotee. From the, he was in the Atlanta Temple. So what we did one year for the 100th anniversary of Prabhupada. I've never seen that before. <laughs> what we did was, we envisioned one month, 24-hour kirtan. Consecutively. One month, non-stop. Sometimes there's only one lady, like, uh, what's her name? Sundari, such a Sundari, your old friend. She's uh, from Nepal. She passed away, but she would be sitting two in the morning, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, half asleep, half awake. Sometimes it's 20 people, sometimes 100 people. One month solid. Then I sent a press release to the newspapers, told them what we were doing. They were completely shocked. And then at the end of it, we walked from uh, Lenox Square, which is in Buckhead. You know, we walked from Buckhead 
to downtown. They was doing opening. That was a different one, opening. So when they heard that we were doing that, they were shocked. Oh my God, Hare Krishnas are doing this wonderful sacrifice. But that 24-hour kirtan for 30 days revolutionized our mood. It was a special energy. And when you walked in the temple, you could feel it. Because we all agreed we're going to do this. There's one spiritual thing. So give me some feedback. What is it that we can do that can bring us closer together? Now remember, it's closer, nearer to, together with each other, then, then nearer to Krishna. The residents of Vrindavan, they got together. Then they got closer to Krishna. First, they had to get together. First, they had to agree to get together because somebody's thinking, well, we should go inside this cave over here. Or maybe we should go over here. Maybe we should hide over there. They said, no, we've got to all go under this hill and see what happens. So what is it? Anybody have any thoughts? Yes, Papi, Papi. Invite sadhus to come. Invite sadhus to come. Because it's Shushu Shodhidhanasya, Vasudeva Kataji. I forget the rest of that verse. But anyway, it says about the sadhus, serving the sadhus. What else? What's your name? Jagish. Jagish? Jagish. Jai Ganesh. Jai Ganesh. Beautiful name. So what, we, what can we do to come closer together and then nearer to Krishna? We should have love for the God. Love for the God. It's a beautiful thought. Beautiful thought. Who else? Your smile was so beautiful. I know you want to, I know you want to share something. Go ahead. It's like always remember person that we forget. Thank you for that blessing. Because if I'm thinking of Krishna and you're 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 thinking of Krishna, you're thinking of Krishna we'll want to be around each other. Because the moment you walk in the room and you're thinking of Krishna, the room lights up. You know that thing they say. Some people walk in the room and it becomes dark. <laughs> But there are other people who walk in the room and become like, wow, how wonderful. We want to be that wonderful. It's not like out of ego. If you're thinking of Krishna, I want to be with you. Because I'm such a rascal. And you're thinking of Krishna, I want to be with you and be around you. You remember at Rathyantra when His Holiness Indra Dunamaraj was doing that last kirtan? Who was there for that last kirtan at Rathyantra? It was madly wonderful, crazy good. And Maharaj told everybody, everyone in this tent has to dance. And in the beginning, some people were, you know, kind of being, you know, I don't want to do too much. By the end, the old, the young, everybody was jumping and running. And at the end, people wanted to be near Maharaj because he had generated such transcendental spiritual energy. And I was the first one to jump on the stage. And I gave him a big hug. I just wanted to be close to him. <laughs> Because he had given so much to us. So, yeah. What else? Yes. Maha Mangalarti. Maha Mangalarti. Saturdays. Okay. <laughs> Family and praise together stays together. Come together for Mangalarti. That's a fantastic idea. Weekends, not a weekend. At least once a month. I mean, you know, it could be done. Or whatever. Yeah. Mataji? Wow, did you hear that? She said, come together, chant one mala together before the program. Like say 3.30. Because the program starts at 4, 3.45 with Tulsi Puja. So before Tulsi Puja, isn't that a fantastic idea? What do you think? Because if we chant together, like I know when I was training my new devotees back in Atlanta, I had a system for all the new bhaktas. I make them all get together in the morning in a circle around Tulsi. But they want to go back to sleep. <laughs> so I put them in a circle. We all chant together, and I would chant with them. And over time, you know, you, all your friends like Jack over and you know, over time it became the thing they were looking forward to, that little time together. It's amazing. What else? What would you do? What can we do? Invite the people in your camp. Invite people into the camp. Mm. Absolutely. Invitation cards. Huh? Invitation cards. Invitation cards. See, this is, these are all good things that are coming out of our hearts when we think about serving Krishna together. Even though we all have... Yes, Sweetie, please. Everyone, if we can all help the Krishna project, everyone that's here serve the Lord. And if we all teach him, even, you know, 5%, 1%, and everybody's project, then we all will be part of it. And that's an amazing thought, <clears throat> because what happens is, 
you're trying to do something. And I'm thinking, I don't know if I want to help you because it'll make you look better than me. <laughs> and that's not good. You know it says in the Christian book, one gopi says, I'll be the first to touch Krishna. No, 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 I'll be the first to touch Krishna. No, 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 I'll be the first to touch Krishna. But what are they all, what are they all trying to do? Touch Krishna. They're trying to outdo each other in touching Krishna. So if you're trying to do something to serve Krishna, and I help you do that, Krishna will be so happy. And Prabhupada will be extremely happy because he said, the test will be how well you can cooperate. Technically speaking, cooperation, it requires communication. Unless I know what it is you're doing, you can't be secretive about what you're trying to do. You gotta let people know what you're trying to accomplish. You'd be amazed. If you share with others your vision, your dreams, how many people will join you for that? As in the case of Prabhupada. He shared his vision and people joined him. But he shared his vision with love. So yes, please put this principle to work. Help each other. And then of course, the verse from Rupa Goswami's Sri Shapanda, uh, not Shapanda, is that? Upadesha Amrita. Who knows the Sanskrit? The Dati Pratilinati Bunte Bujayate Chata Sati Chosa the next line. Who knows? Can you? Yes. Shati Chosa Lakshati Yeah, these six principles. Giving gifts, receiving gifts, giving prasadam, receiving prasadam, revealing the mind, speaking confidentially. Rupa Goswami says that will help us develop the love. So in order to do that, I need to know certain things. I need to know maybe your birthday, and that we can do internally in our membership. We can understand everyone's birthday and these different days and try to remember each other. And give prasadam. Every chance you get, share prasadam. Especially you can share with me. If you can't find anyone to share it with, bring it to me. <laughs> Sukhada, we have a wonderful pastime back in the old days in Atlanta with his devotee, Anantapuri. He was our head cook. And every Friday before the Sunday feast, he would experiment on what he's going to make for Sunday. And his experimental person was me. When I was president, so every Friday he would come to my room with this beautiful spread. And then people started criticizing him. Why don't you just listen to Anantapuri? Because he gives him prasadam. I said, you got it. Because <laughs> I still love this devotee so much, you know, because he always gave a shine. Think about it. The way to a man's heart is through his tummy. Give a shadow. Simple. Doesn't have to be so elaborate. What else? And, and yes, go ahead. Home programs. Home programs. Like last night in Sukhadar Prabhu's house, in Maji, had such a nice program. But you don't realize how much work goes into those programs. It's a lot of work. So that's all love. Anyway, I will stop there. We have maybe four minutes. If anyone has a closing thought, or a question. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. But I'm very serious about this idea of helping each other. You know, really trying to come together and near to Krishna. We don't say we have a common enemy, because I hate that phrase, common enemy. That, that brings people together sometimes. But we have common fears, common threats, things that we're all experiencing. Death is one. You know, not being Krishna conscious is another. What can we do to be more Krishna conscious? So we, we're thinking of some good things. So any question or comment? Okay, thank you all very much. Just raise our hands and say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama.